information, but we don't want to share information for the sake of sharing. We want to share facts and we want to share accurate information that will guide you and, and, and uh, you know, take you through the journey of hype. So let's control the narrative. We're going to share these uh, social media handles. And as an incentive, uh, we'll be monitoring who's doing what uh, throughout the sessions as well. And the best tweets or the, uh, the, the best engagement uh, throughout, uh, the, 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 I've been told this is a small prize uh, as well. So, or two, depends uh, how we go. So, uh, please do share. I mean, we want to reach out to the wider audiences, brothers and sisters, not just in the UK, um, but around the globe that are looking for answers, looking for guidance. So, if you pick up a tip, if you, if you think something is useful, uh, if you've got comments, please share that. You know, let, let's share that with the wider audience and the hedges who are going for hire. Uh, so ready them as well. Uh, and who knows? Maybe you sharing that one uh, tip. Maybe the difference of them having a positive hedge experience and having an accepted hedge as well. So there's reward in that, inshallah. So without further ado. So let's, uh, let's see your mobile phones. Let's quickly get on Twitter and Facebook. And I'll give you a minute to just quickly uh, tag and share. If you want to take a picture of me on stage, no problem. Just do it. You know, just stay here. And we want to share the uh, experience of Hajj in the making, inshallah. So we've got a couple of uh, Twitter handles there. One is CBHUK. That's the Council of British Hajjis, and the other is the APPG Hajjan Umrah, which is the All Party Parliamentary Group for Hajjan Umrah, which I'll cover briefly as well. I think everybody's done. All right, start tweeting, and like I said, the best tweets or tweets, uh, there's a small price on offer. My name is Rashid Magradia, I'm the CEO and founder of the Council of British Hajjis, and it's a pleasure and honor on behalf of me and my team. Uh, and the Board of Trustees to welcome you to the Hajj Seminar here in London. Alhamdulillah, we covered the north of England uh, earlier this month when there was a lot of uncertainty. Now we're getting a little bit more clarity and inshallah, I'll cover that in my slides. Who is a CBH? Well, CBH was established in 2006 uh, in my hometown of Bolton and we've come to become the leading charity that's the voice of British pilgrims, that's on the ground supporting Pilgrims before, during, and after Hajj. Um, we're a multi award winning uh, charity. You may not have heard of us, which may be a good thing because you don't need our uh, assistance. But I'm humbled that when things do uh, go uh, you know, in, a, in a different direction or people need help and support, we're there for them. And I'm humbled that we've been fortunate to be on that journey of Hajj as well. And often people just randomly uh, stop us in, in, in Mecca and say, oh, look, uh, we were at your seminar and alhamdulillah, uh, we're, we're having a very positive Hajj experience. Uh, in 2018, we made uh, further strides, uh, and we, uh, along with uh, my local MP, Yasmin Qureshi, and the Bolton South East, uh, we co-founded the All-Party Parliamentary Group on Hajj and Umrah as well, so that your voice, your concerns uh, are raised at the highest level as well. And alhamdulillah, it's never been needed much more than it has quite recently. And I'll cover a bit of the work that we've done uh, with the parliamentary uh, group as well. We also run other initiatives like the Hajj Awards, uh, working with the trade, and more recently we've developed what's called the Umrah Connect. And uh, if you follow us on Twitter uh, as well, you get to learn a little bit more about what we're doing outside of Hajj as well. So our operation now is pretty much a 365 degree operation as well. This is one thing that I've learned, is that the way you prepare for Hajj and Umrah is the way you're going to experience it. So ask yourself the question, how long have you been preparing for Hajj? So if I can have a show of hands, you know, uh, how long? Six months? A year? Two years? Anyone? Any seconds? Yes, sister. Anyone? Since 2020, mashallah. That's uh, that's probably a year and a half more than I did, it's about six months. Any, any other takers? Alhamdulillah, you can't prepare enough and you'll take a lot back from what you learned here today, share that with your community, with your friends and family, but read up on other uh, books uh, of Big, of Hajj and uh, 
uh, uh, other good cards, uh, you know, books that are not as well to get you spiritually uh, ready for this journey. So agenda for this segment is that we'll cover the requirements for High 2022, uh, the pre-departure requirements, uh, the booking of a package, what to do, what not to do, uh, the High 2022 update, and the new motorway portal as well. I'm going to sit down now. Uh, it will be easier for me to look at my screen as I'm talking, um, and then we'll take over there. So this screen is actually, uh, the webinar is actually broadcast live on YouTube. Uh, if you are on, uh, sorry, um, it's being live uh, broadcast on our Facebook channel. So if you are on Facebook, you can maybe just log on and just share the screen uh, with your uh, friends and family that others can benefit as well, inshallah. <laughs> So this new Mutawif uh, portal, as you know, was launched on the 6th of uh, June, 2022. And this is a new way of booking a Hajj package now. And we've had to really uh, work very quickly uh, to try and understand what this meant. We had an inkling uh, uh, of developments that the Ministry of Hajj was doing, but we wasn't expecting it to happen so soon. But it is where we are. Um, it is looking like uh, this is the system moving forward, and I've been uh, I'm delighted actually to uh, see that uh, uh, Sheikh Abdurrahman Al Halbawi from Dom Tours uh, is here, and he will be sharing and guiding you through that whole por portal as well. And we'll have we'll address your questions and uh, and provide some answers and guidance as well. Uh, so the requirements for Hajj. Uh, 2022 is that 1 million will perform Hajj inshallah, um, and of which 150,000 will be from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. 850,000 will be from outside of the Kingdom. And we in the UK um, will have a quarter. Unfortunately, we don't know what that is at present, um, but uh, inshallah, British pilgrims will be out there as well. Pilgrims must be under the age of 65. Uh, fully vaccinated, that's two COVID jabs. But we're understanding that you may need a booster because you can't upload that element uh, of your vaccination status onto the new portal. Uh, and again, if these are concerns, I want to hear them from you either here or you can submit them later as well that we can feed back to the relevant authorities if you're having any particular issues. Uh, you need to present a negative PCR test 72 hours before departure, and you must not have been to Hajj in the last five years. So health is uh, a paramount, uh, as well as your COVID boosters, you're going to need your meningitis ACWI. So if you've not already had that, you need to have that at least 10 days before departure. And that will give you, and that is actually a mandatory requirement in terms of immunization from the UK. But we also advise you that if you have any health conditions, uh, any chronic illness, et cetera, go and see your GP, make sure you're taking with you any additional uh, medicine for, for when you are on your journey, but take a little bit extra in case there's delays as well. Pre-departure health check, the airline will check your COVID status. So make sure you've got a printout and if you've got uh, a copy on the NHS app, it will be useful. You can download a copy or request one from the NHS link here as well. We'll be sharing these slides with you so you can directly uh, access the resources that we're going to be using for this uh, seminar. Pre-departure checklist, make sure your passport has six months validity upon your return date. Make copies of your travel documents. What I found useful is uploading them onto a, a, a cloud service, G Drive uh, or similar, and it's easy accessible. There'll be multiple times where you're going to need access to your documents. 
uh, most importantly now when you're registering on this uh, new Motowic uh, portal, make sure you've got your uh, uh, file sizes in different, uh, uh, you know, different formats and different sizes as well. We're finding a lot of people having difficulties trying to save PDFs and converting them, etc. And always leave copies of your travel documents with your friends and family, just in case they need to track you down if there's an issue, then they can contact the relevant authorities on your behalf. We're not sure whether you're going to be given a Hajj wristband. So in the past, you've been given wristbands, but there are talks about a Hajj smart card. I saw that in operation in 2019. They were showcasing that at an exhibition. Um, but it, it is looking like technology is going to be playing a big part in Hajj this year. So whatever you get given, wear it at all times. Whatever hotels and locations you're given, make sure you take a copy of the hotel card, location card, if you've got smartphones, just literally put a pin and make sure you know you know where you are. It's very easy to get disorientated when you're in a camp where every corner where you turn left, right, move forward or left backwards, it looks the same. Uh, and that, you know, for many uh, could be a challenge. Just have a show of hands, who's going back to Hajj the first time? Mashallah, quite a few. Who's going on a repeat Hajj? One. Inshallah, I'll put my hand up. Two, three, four, okay. For you guys, yeah, you're, you've been in the service of the Hujjad. Uh, okay, Alhamdulillah. May Allah uh, take us there safely, inshallah. Take a power bank. Uh, a lot of the apps now are on mobile phones, and mobile phones are, uh, are power hungry. Um, so do take a power bank and an unlocked uh, smartphone. If you're going as part of a family or a couple, make sure everyone's got uh, access to a mobile phone uh, as well. In your goodie bags, you've got a Hajj checklist in detail of what you need before, during, and uh, you know the days of Hajj as well. So you can go through and just take it off. Uh, so we've made a handy guide. And if you find, you know, if you're going through that list, actually, you know, we could add to that. So do share that with us. We can always update that for Hajjis to use it in the future. So booking a package traditionally would have been through a Ministry of Hajj and Umrah licensed company that holds a natural. Uh, license that gives you financial protection, and you know we always say look out for them being members of a, a trade association like APTA or licensed Hajj organizers. How many have you have actually booked for Hajj since 2020? Since 2020, okay. And who's yet to book? So there's not a lot of show of hands. So where where are people up to? Have you booked, not booked, unsure, looking to book? Okay, so you, you, you've gone through the WhatsApp website. Okay. Is that the majority? Can I have a show of hands of how many have uh, gone through that portal now? Well, okay. I was not expecting that response. So there's a, quite a lot of new bookings here. And inshallah, our presentation will help you. But for those who have got existing bookings, make sure you've been issued an actual certificate. And if you, haven't, then you need to contact the operator and make sure that you have that because that's your financial protection uh, as well. Existing bookings. Existing bookings. As we understand it, the current um, Motovic website doesn't offer that at all protection. So you need to make an informed decision how you protect that. And we'll try and cover that in the later slides as well. Uh, we've raised that at the highest level uh, with the Civil Aviation Authority. A letter went out as soon as we got to know about the Motelwick website. So we want to make sure that whilst we navigate you through the only portal available at present, as it seems, uh, to book a Hajj package, you have the financial protection in place as well. And like any other package, uh, Atoll is there to provide that assurance. And as soon as we get to hear about uh, the guidance that Atul put forward, we'll share that with you. So this is the advice that Atul have actually put forward uh, on their Twitter as early as uh, Ramadan or maybe earlier. Hajj 22 updates. As we understand it, the licensed Hajj organizers, the Munazams as they are known, are still yet to have their licenses activated. They haven't received a yes or a no. So those with existing bookings, there is a glimmer of hope. Many of the licensed organizers and the companies associated with them have started contacting or 
already uh, have made contact with their pilgrims to advise them. If you haven't, then you need to approach your organizer in advance. Currently, there are no Hajj packages in, uh, on sale in the UK, except the, uh, the portal that's on offer through the Motawif website. And that was launched and went live on Friday afternoon. So why has it gone online? Well, it, as part of Vision 2030, the kingdom is modernizing its infrastructure, its offerings. And one of the ways that it's done this is to increase children numbers uh, to meet uh, what would have been currently two, two and a half million Hajj children to around five million in uh, 2030. And the current 18 million for Umrah pilgrims to be around 30 million uh, uh, by 2030. And we've seen the, the huge development uh, and money that's been spent in the kingdom as we speak to cater for that. So you've had the new airport, you've had the high-speed Haramein rail. And Alhamdulillah, I was one of the lucky ones in Hajj 2019 to be one of the first groups in the UK to travel uh, uh, from Mecca to Medina, cutting travel time uh, from in the past, which would have taken maybe 18 hours to something like two hours. And Alhamdulillah, I'm proud to say that uh, uh, the, the tour operator that was behind it is here with us as well. I'm sure he didn't want to be named, but uh, that was Dawn Tours. Um, but in the similar way as Hajj, uh, Umrah has been developing, Hajj itself had to modernize and move forward. And it is the vision of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to move that forward. It happens to be that the pilgrims of United Kingdom, United States, Canada, uh, Europe, and Australia are the ones that uh, uh, are being led in that field. And we need to be working uh, uh, to support that vision, but understand that this is the way that it will be in the future. It had to start somewhere. One of the great things that the, uh, the Kingdom has done is allowed the issuance of e-visas almost instantly as you apply. So Umrah visas are now issued almost within minutes of your applying uh, from, for, for residents of 49 countries. In the past, we used to wait a week or so to for the agent uh, to get you that visa. I remember when I went to Hajj in 2005, I had to wait anxiously up until three hours before my flight to pick up my passport, which was received uh, on a service station on a motorway, and I get to the airport, and we missed the flight. That was I got to Hajj, but that was my Hajj journey. Uh, so I, I, I totally sympathize and. Uh, appreciate the kind of anxiety and the kind of stresses that people are going through. But Alhamdulillah, this is part of your journey. You know, you'll hear a lot about, said about having patience and patience is something that will get you through Hajj, inshallah. So what are the considerations? So what are the considerations with this new uh, website, the impact on Hajj, Hajj is booked in 2020, deposits paid, paid by companies, a lot of money that was been paid to service providers in the kingdom. What is the financial protection, which I mentioned? What are the groupings of pilgrims? So this Motawif uh, offering, you know, we need to feed back to them that you know, people have cultural needs, they have uh, different schools of thoughts, and they, they have a particular affiliation with uh, their community. And all of these uh, considerations need to be met. Whereas people are preparing for Hajj, they need to understand that before, during, and after Hajj, people travel and associate themselves uh, with their communities. and you know, people want to be traveling with the sheikhs that they know and the groups that they know and the group leaders that they know. We have built a package around, uh, you know, Hajj and the offerings and the needs of our community. So we need to make sure that all that is fed back. And Alhamdulillah, I can say proudly that we are working with the Mutawe uh, in, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and feeding that right back. We're working with the British consulate in Jeddah and feeding that right back. And we're working with the relevant authorities uh, and I met, and I was fortunate to meet with the Deputy Minister for Hajj uh, when we got an inkling of the changes that were coming as early as uh, May and made clear that the needs of the British pilgrims uh, should be met and the needs uh, of British Hajjaj need to be met. And the, the kind of uh, challenges that are required uh, or are needed and to be needed to be addressed as well. And we were given the assurance that the Kingdom is doing everything it has, and it has done. Uh, you know, you may not appreciate as first time Hajis going to Hajj. Uh, what you will see is the first presentation of Hajj. 
but alhamdulillah, people like myself and others who have been yeah, on Hajj on numerous occasions, we've seen how services have developed. You know, I mentioned very briefly about the Hajj journey uh, or the train journey between Mecca and Medina. They cut down to a matter of a couple of hours, where in the past it would take 18, 19 hours in scorching heat. And we've traveled in uh, coaches and buses, which did not have AC. And, and to contend with the, the temperature of Saudi Arabia, you know, it's, it's challenging. And the you know, patience has its limits as well. But I can't do that. We, we've got to do it. Some of the considerations for LHO and the LHO, uh, the licensed Hajj organizers and the association, is how it will offer refunds to existing bookings so that people can take that money and book on their Motawif website. So if you book with existing uh, agents, contact them and work out, uh, you know, it's a challenging time for the trade. And whilst the law will tell you that they need to offer you a refund within 14 days of cancellation, and et cetera, be realistic. You know, there's a lot of money at stake. Their money is tied up elsewhere uh, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, so work with them. And many have come to arrangements of allowing a percentage, a quite high percentage, 50%, 60%, 70% refunds, and then the balance being you know, refunded in, uh, in a period of time. Work with your agent in that. If you were issued a refund credit note, then that expires in September 22. You want to make sure that uh, you use that. The refund credit notes were issued by Atoll, because that will come to an end in 22. Uh, sorry, September 2022. As a representation, we've held uh, meetings with, like I mentioned, Deputy Minister for Hajj, the British Consulate in General in Jeddah, the licensed Hajj organizers and national organizers, Pilgrim Association and POA. Uh, we work as secretariat to the all party parliamentary group. And I know that a lot of work that we've done to facilitate letters and consultation with stakeholders. So we've written to the Hajj Ministry, we've written, written to the Foreign Office, the Saudi Embassy, and all of whom have, uh, uh, have replied to us in one shape, way or form. And we'll continue to make that representation on your behalf. There's a meeting of the all party parliamentary group tomorrow. And you know, if there are members here who would like to attend, as members of uh, Hajis 2022, and you know, maybe be selected to voice your questions and opinions and, uh, and suggestions, then see me after the event or uh, throughout the course of the seminar during the break. And inshallah, state permitting, you know, we'd like to have that you know, vocal representation in person in parliament tomorrow, and that's at four o'clock. And the work continues, you know, we're not gonna stop uh, here, you know, our, we are here to represent the uh, the needs uh, of the British judge and we do our at our best. That brings me very uh, swiftly to the end of my segment. Um, if there are any questions, I'd like to leave them to the end of uh, this other part two of uh, the session, and we'll try and uh, between uh, me and the next speaker, we'll try and address them as best as we can. So. Without further ado, I'd like to invite Sheikh Abdurrahman Hilbawi. He is the director for Dome Tours. He's, he's also an executive member for the Licensed Hajj Organizers Organization, um, who we're working very closely with. And I had the pleasure of uh, actually doing Hajj with as well. Uh, Sheikh Abdurrahman Hilbawi. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وإمام المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وانفق علينا بمعرفة العلم وسهل أخلاقنا بالحلم وارزقنا حلاوة الإيمان وصدق الإخلاص في كل حال رب اشرح في صدري ويسر لي أمري واحفر العقدة من إنسان يقوى قولي أما بعد دير حاجي Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Jazakallah khair, Brother Rashid, for your kind invitation. And uh, it is uh, it's very uh, yeah, I mean, uh, heartwarming to be among the Hujjaj and those who are, inshallah, uh, going to be uh, Hajj. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to invite us all to his house, uh, his house again and again and again. That we made his house a place of return for people again and again and again. 
and the place of safety. So don't worry. Uh, you will face some challenges, but you are the guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't worry about anything. Anything that happens what, during, before, during, and after your journey, you are rewarded for. And there is always a solution for any situation. So just have this mindset when you are going for Hajj, and uh, you, you will enjoy it. The only preparation you will you need to really focus on, besides all the things uh, Brother Rashid said and all the things uh, Sheikh uh, Yunus will uh, talk about, is to work on your dhikr and dua. Start practicing now. You are in, you've invested a lot of time and money and stress and uh, worry and uh, sleepless nights for this journey. But it will be a shame that you go to uh, Arafat and then you start making dua. And then you realize that you are finished. Your dua, the collection of dua that you know, is, uh, is finished within five minutes or 10 minutes. So if you want to go through this exercise, when you go home, you uh, go to a room, sit down, take a pen and paper, or now obviously a tablet or a smart, uh, you know, because uh, it's, it's quicker, whatever you're comfortable with, a timer, and write down the du'as and the adhkar that you know. If you last for five minutes, this is how much, uh, how, how long you will last in Arafat. If you last for 10 minutes, this is how long you will last in Arafat. So how do we make sure that we have a, uh, uh, you know, a wealth of dua and adhkar uh, in order to enjoy and enrich and enhance our journey and our ibadah by practicing that starting from today, inshallah. You practice your walk, you practice your dhikr. You practice your walk, you practice your dua as well. So you can go online, you can contact your the, the shiru, you can find the adkar, the dua in the Quran, write them down and practice them, practice them, practice them. You will have the best time of your life when you go, inshallah, uh, in front of Kaaba, between Safa and Marwa, and in Mina and in Arafat, inshallah. So let me, uh, 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 Brother Rashid kindly uh, uh, invited uh, me to uh, speak about the new portal. And I have to say, I am in no capacity representing the portal, okay? And I don't work with this portal. Uh, uh, the, the, the reason for my presence here, and this is what I said to those the Hujjaj who registered with us as well, is that uh, uh, your, your, your first priority should be to perform your Hajj. Now, you perform your Hajj with, the, with your local Imam or uh, the company that you trusted or the people you wanted to go with, that is your second priority. But the first priority is to perform your Hajj and get ready for that. And mashallah, you are getting ready here, learning from the shiuch, taking uh, travel advice and tips from uh, Rashid, speaking to the people whom uh, you know. This is how you are getting ready. It will be nicer to go with people you know and the company you, uh, you booked with. But if that is not an option, then the option is to go and perform Hajj. To ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you this uh, 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 this invitation and to facilitate it and most importantly to accept it. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ عَمَلْ بِدُونْ قَبُولْ عَمَلْ without acceptance is it's nothing. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for قَبُول and focus your mind and dua always for the قَبُول of this عمل the acceptance, the approval of this عمل by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today I will speak about the portal because I, I, we, I went through it uh, very uh, in, 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 in a lot of detail to understand uh, what uh, packages are there, what's the difference between packages to advise our, those who were registered with us of Hajj uh, if they wanted to uh, go ahead and uh, book on the portal to be able to provide this, uh, this advice. I, I, I went on the portal and I registered myself, inshallah. So if uh, the invitation comes, then yeah, uh, I let uh, Brother Rashid know, and uh, then he will inform you, and maybe we can see you there in Mecca, uh, in Mina, and in Arafat, inshallah. So uh, if we can. Uh, shall I sit down? Okay, we just got an issue in terms of uh, slight updating. Okay. So we're going to have to use this screen. Okay, so no problem. So, so how do I yeah okay. Oh you have a remote? Yeah, that's that's perfect. Uh, actually, no? Fine. 
I'll, I'll speak while it's. Uh, yeah. well, you can use that if you want. Sorry for missing your arrangement. Yeah. Yeah. So the portal is quite, uh, you know, when when you look at, uh, are you going to make a white screen or this is part of the portal? Okay, so, Perfect. so sorry. It's not, for some reason, the live feed's not updating the slides when we put it on full screen. So we're just gonna have to use it. Are you okay with that? Can you see that? Yeah, okay. So uh, I, I think I've seen uh, most of you have been on the portal already, right? So I'm not going to talk too much about the portal. You've, uh, you've been through it. Maybe we can have uh, the, the, the questions, but um, uh, the, the, there are a few things that I would like to mention, uh, which are the, if, yeah, let's see second one. Yeah, uh, uh, this one. Uh, you all aware that uh, the packages on the portal are not final. The packages on the portal are not final. They will be finalized and you will be notified once uh, they have finalized the bookings with the hotels. Uh, I, I would assume that the flights are final, but the hotels and other arrangements are not, uh, uh, are not final. So you will be arranged uh, then. And this is the disclaimer that it tells you here and also you have you must have received a note at the end with the when you finalize the booking which says that uh, if you are booking a private room you may end up in a sharing room as well so this is something else which which tells you that arrangements are not completely final but they are getting there obviously it's a new portal uh, there were some glitches but they are working around the clock to uh, update them um, the packages are simple. Uh, let's go back to the screen. Packages are simple. Um, if you notice anything uh, strange about the pricing here, I will, you know, I'd like to hear it from you. If anyone noticed something? Yes, go ahead. Okay, and what's the difference between silver package and gold package? Yeah, well, let's, let's, let's make uh, some tests here and see how much you studied this for. Uh, so, uh, again. Okay. Seven days extra. Like, I'll talk about seven days extra. Uh, so, the silver one doesn't have Medina in. Actually, I, I've been in the, you know, making packages for almost 25 years. And the longer the package, the, cheap, the, cheap, the cheaper it becomes, usually. The longer packages, become cheaper, 21 days is cheaper than 18 days, cheaper, 18 days cheaper than 14 days. And that's because of the flights become more expensive for shorter uh, packages. Also accommodation usually become, becomes closer to the Haram. It is the other way around here. So the center is close to the Haram in, uh, in Mecca, but there is no Medina. But I'm not, I, I, there is something else in the little details, which I think if someone picked on it uh, before I mention it, Anyone want to comment about the difference? Yes, sister. It seems that sisters have made extensive research, mashallah, as usual. But you couldn't haggle with the system. This is our difference. Dates, when you go into the package, you will find dates. Ah, uh, they're not no, 12 days, they are 12 days, not 7 days. Okay, okay. Hey, hey, how many people booked for the silver package here? Yeah, yeah. I, I was told that it's actually taken off. It's still there, I, 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 you know, on the portal, but when you try to book it, it doesn't work. Because they, I was told this, but I couldn't verify this information. Maybe this is something we can uh, verify at some other point. Someone, someone, yes, 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 brother. Yes, brother. Yeah. Okay. So, so most probably, I think that this is why they uh, they, they will take it, they took took it off or they uh, received some complaints. I don't know why, but it's possible. No, I'm talking about the arrangement in Mina, the Mina camp. Can you see the arrangement in Mina camp? Did you, did you make a research? Do you understand what's the difference between Maraisan and Majar al No? So why did, how did you book them? 
Bismillah. Yeah, that's good. Alhamdulillah. Yallah. It shows you are eager to go to Hajj. MashaAllah. Taqabbal Allah. Right. Who knows what's the difference between Al-Mu'ayasim and Bajar al Kabash? Not you, of course. Not you. You are an expert on Hajj, MashaAllah. You have you been to Hajj before? No. Okay, let's see. No, no, they both in Mina. They both in Mina. Yeah. Ah, yes, sir. No, no, what's the difference between both camps? Al Mu'ism camp and that's Al Mu'ism camp is in Mina. Majar al Kabsh is in Mina. This, I'm talking about this here Al Mu'ism camp and Majar al Kabsh camp. What's the difference between them? Yeah. The word VIB is a word that I don't like. I hate. Why? Because uh, uh, it is very vague. A VIP for somebody could be private jet. And a VIP for somebody could be traveling by aeroplane, any aeroplane in economy class. Yeah, because otherwise you will go on a donkey from one from point A to point B. So a VIP is a very vague uh, word. Although it applies to all of you, because all of you are very important filters. VIP, very important filters, right? Right. So, but what you said is, is correct, is almost correct. Al Mu'ism is the area where they have the camp. And this is the co commercially known in the UK as European camp. So when you are booking a package and it says European camp or the camps in uh, Europa, uh, European sector in Mina, that is Al Mu'ism camp, which is about 45 minutes, 50 minutes walk from the Jamarat each way. Yeah, so which is majority of the Hajjaj in the UK, it stays in Al Mu'ism camp. So this is called Al Mu'ism. The area there is called Al Mu'ism. Majar al Kabsh, Majar al Kabsh is the what is known commercially in the UK. And as I said, I don't like this word, but commercially it is known here as the VIP camp. Some agents they are very you know cheeky, so they say VIP camp in the European camp. Yeah, which is uh, yeah, they, they mean there is air condition and there is other facilities, etc. But uh, nevertheless, so Majar al Kabsh, the word Majar al Kabsh, it means the uh, Majar means um, uh, it comes from uh, 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 pulling, or the, this is basically the area where uh, supposedly, or in history, we read, we have no confirmation about this, but we history read that this is the area where Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام, was given the sacrifice and he took this sacrifice to. Uh, uh, to slaughter it, to sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very close to the Jamarat, and uh, we call it also the Jamarat camp or the Majarat camp. Now, what I wanted to point out is here the silver package says Al Mu'ism camp, which is the European camp, right? And then the golden package says Majar al Kabsh, the platinum package says Majar al Kabsh as well. If you look into the details, how many of you booked the golden package? Mashallah. How many of you booked the, the platinum package? Okay, why did you book the platinum package? Too much money. Mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> you wanted to do the best. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I, I receive calls like this sometimes. You give me the best. I said there is no best. It's all best, mashallah. The best is from here, from the heart. The best is from the heart. But it, I, it is very interesting to see uh, you know, why did you book the platinum package? Did you compare golden and platinum? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Hi. So the difference, the difference. Sorry? No train. Train? Does it include train? Sorry? No, the, the, the train between me and Mashar. And not between Makkah and Medina. Yeah. Right. The mistake here is that they are the, the, the Majar al Kabsh camp. This actually, in my, in my uh, I think, personally, I'm not representing the power, but I think that this is a mistake. I think this should be Al Mu'ism camp because the difference in prices when we make packages, we know the, the difference in components and elements in the package. The difference between Majar al Kabsh camp. And Marison Camp and Majar Al Kabsh Camp comes to about 2,500 pounds. 
So if you were booking a package with local travel agents here in the UK, uh, uh, going in the European camp will be cheaper than going in the Jamarat or VIP camp by about 2,000, 2,500 pounds. So if you compare the differences between the golden package and the platinum package, they are in the same hotels, they are using the same flights, uh, everything is almost the same. A rug will not cost uh, 2,000 pounds more. So it is, there is a mistake there in this, uh, in this package. So if you book the golden package, just be prepared that you will be notified that this is not actually Majabra Cap scan. This will be in an Oasis scan. Okay? It's clear? Did I confuse you? Yeah? Yeah? Yes, no? no. Clear. Say la baik Allahumma la baik. Say la baik Allahumma la baik. 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 Now we are away. Right. So these are the three uh, packages you uh, completed, you uploaded your documents, everyone uploaded documents. Yeah? Yeah? Right. And then uh, payment, yeah, payment on the 15th of June. Uh, the, the draw selection, it's uh, digital draw selection, you'll be notified. We don't know what is the algorithm they use uh, for this. But uh, once you are notified, you will be given about, they said, 48 hours. And uh, to make payment, payment, you can use credit card, debit card. There is 2 percent, 1.95 percent extra, which is approximately 130, 120, 150 pounds, uh, which you will be charged when you pay by the debit or uh, credit card. Um, you can also make, I think, a bank transfer, but bank transfers will take much longer much longer time. If you are paying, don't pay with a debit card because you have no security when you pay with a debit card. You pay with a credit card, check with your uh, credit card issuer. Most probably you have some insurance involved, uh, included. So I just suggest, if you go through the bookings, they're like 60,000 pounds. Can we use multiple cards? I honestly don't know. I assume they will have some arrangement for this, but I, I honestly don't know. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. okay. So, th this is, these are, yes, sir. Uh, so, the, uh, the brother said that you can make several payments. Yeah. Okay, I think the, I, I covered, uh, uh, go back once. What is your utmost priority? Huh? Going to Hajj, yeah? Have this your, in your mindset. And when you go to Hajj, not, especially in this circumstances where everything is a last minute thing, it's, everything is rushed, etc. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just stating facts. I'm not here to criticize or point out this or that. Just mind, uh, uh, keep your mindset focused on performing your Hajj. And be prepared not to receive the level of service you may be expecting. And the shaitan will come and try to tell you, do this and do that, and how come and why are you doing this? And focus on your hajj. Be patient and focus on your hajj. Because you are there to complete your hajj. Whoever made a, 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 a pact or decided to go on hajj, you are entitled, you have rights, you should be receiving your rights, you should be receiving what you paid for, but focus on your main objective, because this hajj is like no other hajj. You have been waiting for this hajj for two years. This hajj is not like any other hajj. So if you are uh, uh, granted this opportunity, as an advice, and I, I, you know, I stand in front of you here and I speak about this, I, I know the level of stress and pain that everybody's been uh, through, and we feel this pain uh, maybe multiple times, because we've been praying for 25 years, and now we don't know whether we will go or not. Uh, just focus on Hajj. And after Hajj is done, inshallah, you see if you can uh, get back uh, anything you are entitled to. But don't manage your expectations so you don't ruin your experience. And this is all I'm saying. The package details, Khalas, you spoke about it. Data protection is an issue. Uh, you, have you received the spam uh, email? No? 
So this is just to prepare you. They wanted you to go to beauticians to prepare you before coming to Mecca and Medina. Uh, adult protection, no adult protection. And adult protection means that if anything goes wrong, you are able to uh, play, you are able to, you are able to uh, um, uh, challenge the service that was provided. This is not, uh, this is not provided with uh, this uh, package. And in the terms and conditions, I read interestingly that the portal itself or the company is not responsible for any failure in service. That the service provider, so the hotel is the one who's responsible, the, com the car uh, or the coach company is responsible, which is, which is very vague here and it's not really fair, but this is what it, it is what it is now. Our main focus is going to Hajj. Uh, credit card, I think we the choice of packages, we covered that. The lottery draw, we don't know uh, algorithm, but uh, I, I think majority of people who apply from the UK will be accepted. Yeah. Because I, uh, but I, this is this is again my assumption. But from talking to people who are there uh, in uh, in uh, Saudi, uh, yeah, the, the registration was not as much as they expected. So majority of I, I would say majority of people from the UK will get inshallah a chance. Um, uh, the UK Hajj quota usually we have 26. Everyone is happy. See, as soon as I said that, they are happy. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, 26,000 bedroom every year. Uh, it went down because of the 45% to about 12,000. And uh, we heard a, a, number, a figure of 3,500, uh, uh, you know, through the portal. Will the remaining go with the agents? Will we be activated? This is something that uh, we don't know yet. Well, I think uh, it was that, uh, yeah. the, 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 you know, the... Uh, Concerns, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Payment protection, bank transfer. So the the um, uh, there is one about the rumor. Yeah. So so as I said, no final decision on Muslims. There is a lot of messages going around. People sharing a lot of messages. Yeah. I mean, verify before you send it. Ver verify before you get anxious and uh, uh, stressed about a message you read here and there. And beware of those who will be circulating links to uh, collect payment um, uh, uh, other than the actual portal that you have uh, booked on. I think that's it uh, for this one. Yeah. Uh, update. Yani Rashid is doing, a, and his team, they are doing a fantastic uh, uh, job uh, of keeping you update, uh, up to date um, and also working tirelessly behind the scenes to um, uh, make sure that those who will go on the, uh, through the portal, uh, they will be safe and looked after, inshallah. So look out and stay, uh, stay tuned because there will be, inshallah, some good news uh, uh, shared at, uh, later uh, uh, in a few days, inshallah. So uh, he's working very hard to make sure that there is someone there to take care of you when you are there, inshallah. Yeah, and take provisions and uh, in, interestingly, uh, uh, taqwa, yes, interestingly, this uh, verse, it's in uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, and uh, it talks about Hajj. And some people usually, or some imams, they translate taqwa here, or they interpret taqwa as in piety, and the, you know, the taqwa of the heart. But if you go to the mufassirin, the, the ulama of tafsir, especially the, yeah, the, 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 the older books of tafsir, taqwa here, it means what, whatever allows you to uh, have the strength, the whatever gives you strength during your journey, which is your food, which is your uh, uh, provision, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and take provision. So if you have special arrangements that you need to take with you, if you have snacks that you will uh, take with you, if you have, and part of your provision is preparing for your dhikr and dua. Any question, any fatwa you will find, uh, you will have access to the shiuk, you will have access to the uh, people who can advise you, but it is the dhikr and dua that no one will be able to do on your, in your place or on your behalf. So make sure that you take your provision. Make sure that you have uh, made your plans uh, in accordance with your requirements and needs, inshallah.
جزاكم الله خيرا Uh, no, no. I said that the the Saudi the Hajj Ministry announced that the number of pilgrims they announced this back in uh, Ramadan uh, that the number of pilgrims from the UK will be twelve thousand, which is less than half of what we usually have because of the decision. But the portal, from what we are hearing, again this is not, uh, but from what we are hearing from very trusted sources that they made arrangements for around 3,500, 3,300 people uh, from what we are hearing for the, from the UK. Now, will the rest be given to the agents who are licensed agents or the rest will be scrapped? Will they increase the capacity of the portal? These are all possibilities. Okay. We have a few minutes, um, actually three minutes. If there are any questions, we'll open up to the floor. Yeah, uh, obviously the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, as you will learn from uh, Maulana Sheikh Yunus uh, is to go to Mina uh, on the eighth day of the Hijjah and then Arafah on the ninth day of the Hijjah and the first day which is the eighth day is called Yawm al -Tarwiyah. And this is the day where people settle in, get into the mindset, prepare themselves for going uh, to, to Arafat and Muzdalifah the following day. So some people uh, prefer to go directly to Arafat, they skip Mina, and they do a shortcut. Yeah? Don't do shortcuts and go to Mina first, because this is the Sunnah of the Prophet Sorry? You, if you're going to take insurance, make sure that the uh, insurance provider is covering you for the money that you are paying, because most of them cover up to £6,000 only. So some of them are actually covering more, but you have to pay more for the uh, policy. And secondly, make sure that they will cover you even if you don't book with an atoll protected agent. So some of them, they specify that if you are not booking with an atoll uh, uh, protected agent, then insurance will be uh, void. So double check with them. So contact your insurance provider and check with them. Uh, I just jumped in and answered. Uh, no, no, that's fine. I think uh, we're still waiting for guidance from Atoll as well, because some insurance providers may ask that you are booked with an Atoll provider and there's that ambiguity. The loss is very clear that you need to book with an Atoll when you're booking a package, which includes flight or main elements of flight for additional services, you need to be able to protect it. So we're seeking clarity on that very quickly. So stay connected with TVHUK. Um, so, question. So, uh, can you talk about the credit cards? Is that permissible? Because we're actually borrowing on the credit card. Sorry? Is, I didn't get the question. Sorry. So uh -huh. uh, we have to use our own money to pay for Hajj. So yeah. how does that work? You, shall I answer this? You, you can deposit the money first. So technically you are not borrowing. But even if you pay it, and then you are going to pay because it's, a, it's a, to go into the details of how to go to Hajj when you owe a debt, there are, it's not as black and white as, uh, uh, as this. But it's fine. Just to add on that point, you don't need to necessarily make the full payment. If it's, even if it's a pound on a credit card, rest of the amount will be protected. So again, check with your credit card provider. Uh, that's our understanding anyway. But, but you are not technically, yes, you are borrowing money and then going with the debt, but you can pay this money off straight away if you have the money, of course. But if you don't have the money and you're going to borrow the money from the credit card to go to Hajj, no, don't do it. Uh, Hajj going through domestic, domestic as in here or in Saudi? No, in here. So he ah. was domestic, so that only the UK, so I understand. So I understand the possibility. 
So you're asking if it is still possible to go to Hajj through agents locally. To, to, to book your Hajj through an agent here in the UK? Yes. Up until now, this is not allowed now. The only, the only way that we are sure of that you can go to Hajj is the portal. Are they going to activate agents or not? That is still, yeah, that is still not, uh, we have not received officially, we have not received any uh, emails or documents from the Hajj ministry to tell us, guys, go home, you are retired now. They haven't said that. And, uh, you know, they, they we, I was there, I came back from there only a few days ago, and they kept, they, they were giving us mixed messages. So, so that's not, so if you want to be sure, book on the portal, book on the portal. But if you're not feeling comfortable, then wait and see whether it will happen or not. I'm just conscious of time now, so we'll leave the questions for now. One last one, Gordon. Sorry, if you're just close to see. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, uh, the question is if, uh, if when you are booking uh, yourself and your wife, so then you make one booking. Yes, make one booking. Yeah. So Unless you have more than one wife, that's a different thing. <laughs> so, Alhamdulillah, thank you for uh, for this session. I want to just bring that to a close. I'll, I'll take questions after as well. I'm just conscious that we've got uh, Zohar Salah as well, and I want to bring Sheikh Yunus on. We'll start that session very quickly. I just want to say quickly, thank so you to uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman uh, for his input, and I'm, I'm sure it's been valuable. And again, we'll be taking feedback throughout the course of the afternoon as well. So please do feed that back, you know, scrap piece of paper or just email us as well. And uh, just before I introduce uh, you all to the next speaker, we'll take a couple of minute break because we just need to get the tech thing sorted. Uh, so if you want to just freshen up very quickly, two minutes, two minutes, we'll, we'll, we'll be ready to go. Everyone's back in the past, 12 to 4, 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 12 to 4